Hey, how's it going, everybody? If you're new here, welcome in. And if you've been here before, welcome back. I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And today I've got two arc forms in front of me. And this feels like deja vu, primarily because I've recorded this video once, but I didn't actually hit the record button. So here we are. We're going to go over these again because I think that it's worth going over. Uh, these came my way from Rob's Nerdy Knives, who is passing them around from the Lefty EDC Pass Around Group. So we're going to check them out. We're going to get into it. These are two designs that were released last year in 2023, and they finally made their way to my desk. I I'm excited. These are both knives that I really wanted to check out. We're going to start off with this one. This is actually one that I've been heavily considering over the last year. This is the Arc Form Theory. Yeah. Oh, let me tell you, I don't typically gravitate towards thumb stud only knives. Thumb stud only knives typically underwhelm me. Uh, it, it takes a lot. There are a few exceptions to this. I love the Quiet Carry 9, for example. I think the Quiet Carry 9 is fantastic. The things that drew me to this knife initially is this really interesting blade shape. What do you call that? I think that the blade shape that this most closely resembles would be the Chris Reeve Insingo style blade, but even then it's it's not not really, right? Is that a drop foot, a, a, sheep, a dropped sheep? Someone dropped their sheep off? I, I don't know what to call that. It's a blade with a little bit of belly, pointy tip, and a high arcing spine. Uh, these thumb studs are very, very interesting. I, I haven't really seen anything quite like it. It's somewhere between like a ramp and a disc. Not quite a disc, thank goodness. I'm not a huge fan of thumbs di thumb discs personally. We've got full titanium body scale construction with T8 hardware. And yes, I know this from the last video that didn't record. This is T8 body screw, T8 pivot screw, T8 lock bar insert. We have a, uh, a reversed cutout here for the lock bar relief. That's nice because it means that you don't have as much stuff that could easily snag on your pocket when you go to take this out of the pocket. Uh, the pocket clip is also 3D milled titanium, not quite deep carry. You'll have about that much sticking out. Not a whole lot, not egregious. You know, I'm not, I'm not really all that sad about it. Uh, there is no lanyard hole. Hallelujah. I'm not a big fan of lanyards. Uh, it's just not my thing. It does not have a single-sided captive pivot. I can honestly live with that. Would I like to see it? Sure. Is it a deal breaker? No. The blade is M390 and it's not very small. Let's do a quick size comparison. This is my Demco 8020.5. As you can see, it's a bit bigger than that. Uh, this is going to be closer to like paramilitary two range. The ergos feel good in the hand and it does index really well. This is one of those knives that is going to be really quite simple to get used to. Is it a guillotine on the action? No, but if you give it a little bit of encouragement, it'll do the job. It'll go, it'll go home. It'll go to its home. You know, just got to give it a little bit of a, a tappy tap. Let it let it fall shut with a bit of encouragement. Get out your pom-poms. I, I actually really like this. It's simplistic. Slab style handle scale construction. Singular body screws on each side. Something that I think is really neat is this crowned backspacer. It goes about halfway up the, uh, the, the spine of the handle scales, which is nice. Uh, the crown backspacer kind of reminds me of what you get out of the Brian Brown Jaeger M. Um, and I like that. It is kind of weird though, because it's not proud and it's also not flush. It's a little bit inset. So I don't know why they go to the trouble of crowning that backspacer and then not making it proud. Uh, the, the best part about anything that's crowned is, is that when, if it sticks out, it's fine. It doesn't hurt the ergos at all. Ergos do feel good. Blade shape is very interesting. We have this sharpening choil up front. I kind of wish that they had gone a little bit, a little bit more onto the blade with that because I'd like to see that edge termination a bit farther away from that plunge grind. Other than that, it gets really thin here behind the edge and then it continues up. This is a, a beautiful full hollow grind. And when we look at that, let's see. Yeah, that, that grind looks perfectly even. 
I mentioned that because I don't know who the OEM for this is. Arcform tells us that it's made in China, but they don't tell us by who. I did look on Arcform's website and I didn't see it. I didn't see anything that told me who makes this. If you know who the OEM is for Arcform in China, go down to the comment section and educate me because I got a little frustrated when I was looking for it. I don't know why people hide their Chinese OEMs. Like maybe they're afraid that, you know, other companies will start getting in on their OEM work when they like how something's done. I don't I don't know. Or maybe it's done by a really cheap Chinese OEM and they don't want us to find out that the, you know, the M390 is heat treated to like 45 or something like that. I'm not sure. All right, the second one is going to be the Arcform Saber. Ooh. So here's the deal. I don't like Ultim. I'm just going to get this out in the open. I don't like Ultim. So why did I sign up to see this knife? Because I do like the overall design and because you can, in fact, get this with Micarta. And for the record, this one is going to be about 160 to 180, depending upon whether you get it in Micarta or Ultim. Uh, they, they tell us that this is a black blade. I don't necessarily think that that is a DLC coating because it doesn't look the same as this one. This one is more of a matte finish. This one is DLC coating. And by the way, this one is going for about 310 to 340, depending upon what finish you want to get it in. So I believe this is a Snyder design. I'd have to double check to be sure. Inset liner lock and plenty of access to that liner. Action is good. Detent feels good. How's the blade centering? I mean, it's been through like 10 reviewers so far. Blade centering looks, yeah, it looks good. We have an Ultim backspacer. And I got to say, the edges on this Ultim are nicely machined over. Uh, there is no sharp corners. Everything is nicely rounded. Good little EDC knife on this one. How does it index? You know what? Index is pretty good. This is more going to be more of your, your classic style blade. Uh, with the thumb hole. It kind of actually reminds me of a CM design. Let me know if you agree. Uh, the other one is M390. This one is 20 CV. They're pretty much the same blade steel, just made by different companies. This, you know, 20 CV may, being made by Chris Crucible Industries, and then M390 being made by Bowler. I'm impressed. Is this a titanium pocket clip? Is it steel? Let's go ahead and use the magnet. It's not magnetic. I know some, some of you guys are already heading to the comment section like, listen, you know what? They make non-magnetic knife steel alloys. That could be some crazy material. Um, in case you didn't know, I would say about 85 to 90% of the time when a pocket clip is non-magnetic, that typically means that it's going to be titanium. Now, I did look up these knives a little bit, but I didn't actually see what this material was. I, as a betting man, I'd bet that that is titanium. So Ultim, titanium, matching Ultim backspacer, blacked out 20 CV blade. These are going for 180 bucks. Is it worth it? Well, I got to say, it is nice. I don't know if I'd pay that primo price for Ultim. I think I'd rather pay 160 and get it in my Carta. I think the 160 version in my Carta is actually the way to go if you're interested in these. I think that these are pretty cool actually. And here's the deal guys, both of these are currently available. If you want to check them out, I will of course link them in the description down below so you can make that decision for yourself. If I was looking to buy one, I would 100% spend the extra dough on this one. Um, I, I, I know that they make these in a couple different variations. I think I would probably go for the non-blacked out version with the regular raw titanium and then the satin finish. I think that looks really clean and I just like how it looks. DLC is going to be a bit more expensive. For this specific variant, you're going to spend $340. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Let's have a conversation. Uh, do you have one of these? Do you like these? Have you never seen these before? Are you planning on buying one? If not, why not? And by the way, if you want to watch more awesome knife and EDC content, go ahead and click on one of the videos that pops up next.